Hello everyone and welcome to the E3 Leadership Conference at Region 1. Very proud to be your keynote speaker today. A special thank you to Region 1 and the entire staff. I appreciate you all very much for everything that you do for our region. Uh, region 1 is a powerhouse because we have a tremendous service center and all the employees at Region 1 are very, very supportive. So I do want to thank Region 1 from the bottom of my heart. Also, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's conference. Uh, thank you all for being students of the game. It says a lot about you all that you're willing to go the extra mile for yourselves to get better, regardless of whether you're a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, a director, an assistant superintendent, or a superintendent, or anywhere in between. It shows that you care about getting better, and at the end of the day, that's what it's about. When you look at my story, I've been in education for 25 years. And I'm very proud of the fact that I followed in my father's footsteps. And I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be just like my father because I saw the impact that he was having on his students. So I wanted to remind you all of the impact that you're having on you all students and the importance of doing everything that you can to help students reach their full potential. In today's world, in the COVID-19 environment, we've had to make adjustments. So I know at the conference you'll be learning about synchronous instruction, and asynchronous instruction. You'll be learning about how to make sure that you also meet the emotional intelligence side of the child and, and not only the academics. So those are some of the highlights from some of the, the outbreak sessions that, that I saw. So I thought that that was, that was nice to see. But as far as my path in education, once again, I've been in for 25 years. I was a classroom teacher. I was a science teacher. And I fell in love with the art of teaching right when I came into the game. And I knew that at some point, my ultimate goal was to be a superintendent. So I had to follow a certain pathway in making sure that when I was a teacher that I was really honing my skills in on making sure that, that every student that entered my classroom experienced something that was going to help them reach their full potential. And the only way that I was going to do that is by, is by having a framework that, that uh, would allow me to conceptualize how to move forward. And as I moved through my career and I became an assistant principal and a principal and eventually started uh, my dissertation and started working on, on my doctorate and finishing that up, I really started to hone in on a leadership model. And that's what I wanted to share with you all today. But before I get into the leadership model and the four perspectives of it that can help you with regard to anything that you're doing right now, whether you're running a classroom, whether you're leading a campus, a division in a district, or an entire district, this leadership model can help you move forward. But I did want to tell you a little bit about my path. Uh, after I was a science teacher, I became an assistant principal. And I did that at the middle school level, and I did that at the high school level. And one of the things that I loved about being an assistant principal is I had great principals, so I was able to learn from them. I was able to understand how they led their campuses. I was able to start learning how they monitored instruction. And that really shaped me so that when I became a principal and, and eventually became a principal in McAllen ISD, I already had a foundation built. And I share that story with you is because I encourage you all to continue being students of the game. I encourage you all to continue getting better, to continue reading books, to continue coming to conferences like this because that's what it's about. It's about making sure that you're committed to getting better. So that's my main message today as you all learn about, about how to be effective, about how to engage, about how to make sure that, that you're equitable in your delivery, that you understand the importance of improving yourselves. But along my pathway, after being a principal for eight years in the district, I became the associate superintendent for instructional leadership in McAllen ISD. And I had the opportunity to work with all 33 campuses at the time. And again, continue to learn. As I worked with principals and I worked with campuses, I started to learn and I started to hone in on this leadership model that I'm going to share with you all. And I started to perfect it. And it started to become the review of literature for my dissertation. So it's based on research, but really driven through practice. And it's been proven to be very effective. So I'm excited to share the four perspectives with you all shortly. But before I do that, I did want to share a short video with you all that highlights my perspective on instructional leadership and tells a little bit about my pathway. When I look at educational leadership, I always look at it through the lens of we're entrepreneurs of the human spirit. We're in the dream business. 
as educators, we have to put systems and processes in place to put them in a position to fulfill that dream. Something that near and dear to my heart is being an educator and having an influence on people. Because when you look at it with depth and complexity and you look at it from a parent's point of view, you start to understand the magnitude of what the field of education is all about. And I knew from a young age that I wanted to be like my father because I wanted to have the same influence that he had on his students. And anytime you look at being an educator, you understand that you're influencing people's stories and we all have stories. As you move through a system and you try to become a world-class organization, everything's built on communication and trust. And that's the foundation of relationships. You better have great teachers. You better have a committed staff. You better be ready to rock and roll because it's not going to come easy. Today we found out it's official. We got an A. Yeah. Woo. We got an A. Yeah. We're a district that uses value-added progress monitoring to make sure that we're adding value to every child. We're a district that looks at every state objective that's taught with depth and complexity. We're a district that reteaches when you don't understand something and enriches when you do. So when you look at our community and how we come together, when you look at our board of trustees and how committed they are to our educational system, when you look at our teachers and our entire staff and everything that they put in to ensuring that our students receive a world-class education, that's when the magic happens. And that's what we have in McAllen ISD. So 23 years, it's gone by fast. And I look forward to many more years in McAllen ISD and many more successes. I hope you enjoyed the video. And it's important to understand that all of the success that we've had in my particular district in McAllen ISD is because everybody does their part with respect to their role on the team. And that's what's so important. So to the teachers at the conference today, please know how important you are. And please know that what you're doing is going to impact generations to come. And also, speaking to you as a father, I have a six-year-old little boy. His name's Joshua. I have a seven-year-old little girl. Her name's Samantha. And a nine-year-old little boy. His name's Joe Douglas. And I share that with you all because they're my heart and my soul. And I depend on my campus principal to help me nurture and guide them. I depend on the teachers that they have to help me nurture and guide them and love them. And the same is true for every parent that sends their children to your classrooms. The magnitude of what you do, the importance of what you do as a classroom teacher is, is astronomical. And I wanted to remind you of how important you are to shaping our world and how important it is for teachers to make sure that they do their very best every day. And it's not easy work. So just know that I appreciate you all from a father's side, but, but also as a professional, thank you all very much. And for all the instructional leaders out there, the model that I'm gonna share with you all is tested and again, can be executed with regard to, to anything that you're doing with regard to leadership. And I'll jump right into it. When you look at McAllen ISD, we have a leadership model. And what a leadership model does is it allows you con to conceptualize the art of leadership. It gives you four frameworks. It gives you four perspectives. And I'll start with the first. The first perspective in the McAllen ISD leadership model is the business perspective. Whether you're running a classroom, a division, an entire district, there's a business perspective to how you move that particular entity forward. And I wanted to share the four components of our leadership model from re with regard to the business perspective. And the first is very, very important. Number one is building synergistic relationships. And you may be thinking, synergistic relationships, how can that impact a business? How can that make things better in my classroom? Well, if you look at synergy for what it is, it's a fancy word for teamwork. So what you're trying to do within an organization is get everybody to start to leverage their strengths. From a synergy standpoint, you have to get everybody to understand that we all have strengths and weaknesses, but we also have to get everybody to understand that when you're down, I'm gonna pick you up. And when I'm down, you're gonna pick me up. Because that's life. Life will, life will become difficult at times. And we need to know that we have each other's back. So if you're a classroom teacher, the importance of building synergistic relationships is important 
Now, I'm not going to give you the prescription for how to do that, but what I am going to tell you is you have to figure out how to build a teamwork, a synergized approach to dealing with your parents as a classroom teacher, your students, your colleagues, yourself, and making sure that, that all of that is balanced with regard to how you move the organization forward. But you have to think about that with depth and complexity. So the question becomes as a classroom teacher is on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the highest, where does my classroom rank in the area of synergistic relationships, in the area of teamwork? And then you have to start thinking critically on how you build that teamwork. So that's important. The second component to the business perspective is continuous improvement and self-evaluation. Now, one of the things that you all are doing today is you're in a conference so that you can learn, so that you can improve yourself. So that proves to me that you're committed to continuous improvement and self-evaluation. But you have to be very real with yourself with regard to your strengths and your weaknesses and where you need to get better. Continuous improvement is about finding mentors. Continuous improvement is about sharing ideas. Continuous improvement is about being okay when you make mistakes, but having this burning desire to improve upon those mistakes, to get better, to correct them, and to continuously be getting better. One of the things that we ask our students to do is to be lifelong learners. So we have to look in the mirror and say, am I being a lifelong learner as a teacher? Am I being a lifelong learner as a principal, as a superintendent, as an assistant superintendent? Am I committed to getting better? Because it's a journey. So continuous improvement and self-evaluation is a key component to the business perspective of what we do. So we've talked about synergistic relationships. We've talked about now continuous improvement. The third component to the business perspective is systems and processes for the, the universe of all possibilities. So if I'm a campus principal, I am going to make sure that I work with my team to have systems and processes for every aspect of the organization. If I'm, I'm a building principal, I'm gonna have systems and processes for how I develop the master schedule. I'm gonna have systems and processes for how kids walk down the hallway, for how we monitor instruction, for how kids are dropped off, for how kids are picked up, for how we execute our student code of conduct. You get the picture. Every aspect, there has to be systems and processes that are constantly looked at, fine-tuned, there has to be feedback loops and there has to be ways to monitor those systems and processes. If I'm a classroom teacher, the same is true. I have to have systems and processes for how kids walk into my classroom, for how kids turn in homework, for how kids collect assignments, how kids go to the restroom, how kids ask for help. There has to be a system and a process for every aspect of how you run your classroom. And if you don't have systems and processes, then you're at a disadvantage. So we've talked about synergistic relationships, continuous improvement. And the third of the business perspective is systems and processes. And finally, the fourth component of the leadership model with regard to the business perspective is leadership. Now, a lot of people think I have to have a title to be a leader. You don't have to have a title to be a leader. Everybody, students, have to take leadership roles. Parents have to take leadership roles. The principal obviously has to take a leadership role. Teachers, department heads, grade level chairs, first year teachers, everybody within the organization has to make sure that they understand that leadership is just the willingness to want to be a leader. Leadership is having influence on individuals. So if you think about the first step to being a leader is having the desire to lead. And then the second is to understand that it's about influence and it's about helping people. So once you get in your classroom, on your campus, in your division or across your district, everyone honed in on synergistic relationships, continuous improvement and self-evaluation, systems and processes and leadership and everybody understands those constructs with depth and complexity and executes them then you start to get momentum as an organization. Then you start to get results as an organization. Then you start to build a brand. Then it's easier to market success. See, a lot of times we want to be competitive, but part of being competitive is bottom line production. And the only way you can produce is that every with, everyone within the organization has a construct to understand that. 
So I wanted to share the business perspective with you all because it's important. The second component of our leadership model is the psychosocial perspective. So I've talked about the business perspective and that's important. But the psychosocial part of the game, the emotional intelligence part of the game, that is key. And if you haven't taken a deep dive on what emotional intelligence is all about, and if you forget everything else that I talk about today in my short keynote, please don't forget the importance of emotional intelligence. Please don't forget the importance of S-S-M-E-S. S-S-M-E-S. I'm going to be talking about S-S-M-E-S. And what I mean by S-S-M-E-S or S-S-M-S is I'm going to talk about the importance of self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. That's what we focus on in McAllen ISD to make sure that everybody within the organization understands the importance of emotional intelligence and not just being book smart. You have to be people smart. So if you want to be the very best teacher, it's not only about getting your degree. It's not only about passing your exit exam and getting certified. It's not only about knocking it out of the park in your interview and landing the job of your dreams. It's about being emotionally intelligent once you get into the classroom. And the only way you can do that is by really focusing on the five components, the five domains of emotional intelligence. From a self-awareness standpoint, it's, under, it's important that you understand your strengths and weaknesses because we all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have things that we're good at. We all have areas that we need to improve upon. So self-awareness is important. So what we do in our district is emotional intelligence is a common thread across our customer service model. The five domains of emotional intelligence is standard one of our customer service model. Emotional intelligence is the psychosocial perspective of our leadership model. And emotional intelligence is also a component of our framework for student learning. So you can see how important it is to us to raise the emotional quotient of the entire organization. So if you're in a friendly competition and the entity or the classroom or the district or the division that you're competing with is really focusing on raising the emotional quotient of everybody in the organization and you're not, then you're at a disadvantage. But more than that, the product that you're putting out, you may have students that are able to do very well on the SAT or the ACT. You may have students that are going to earn associate's degrees and get college hours before they graduate. You may have students that have high GPAs, but if they haven't experienced an intentional delivery of emotional intelligence, and if the adults haven't either, then you're selling yourself short. Because the power becomes in being a medical doctor that understands how to deal with people, being a teacher that is also people smart, being a principal that can not only lead their campus, but can also work with people. And the way that that happens is by raising your emotional quotient. So we talked about self-awareness. Everybody in the organization has to look in the mirror and, and really look at what you're good at and really look at what you need to improve upon. That's the first S. The second S is self-regulation. Now this is very important because life is tough. Life is going to beat you up sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be before a crisis, you're going to be in a crisis or you're going to be after a crisis and it's cyclical. So if you look at a hundred people, there's somewhere in that spectrum and we've all been in that season in our life where we find ourselves in a crisis. We've all been in that season in our lives where we, where we lose a loved one, where a relationship goes bad, where Something bad happens at work that makes you feel terrible, where you don't meet a deadline, or something happens where, from an emotional standpoint, you can feel it physiologically. Understanding self-regulation is your ability to manage your emotions under pressure. And the very best of the best are able to do that. The very best of the best are comfortable being uncomfortable. The best of the best at anything keep their cool and stay calm under pressure. 
the best of the best, when things are loud and things are moving fast around them, they self-regulate. Where in their mind and in their perspective, they can slow things down and they can see things for what they are. But that takes a skill. Self-regulation is important. Otherwise, you make mistakes. Otherwise, you say things that you don't mean. Otherwise, you, you let your temper get the best of you. You let your competitive spirit get the best of you and it works to your disadvantage. So self-regulation is key. That's the second S. Motivation is the M and motivation is about getting up every day and understanding that you're blessed. Motivation is about making sure that you understand that, that every day you need to count your blessings for everything that you've been given in this life. And because you've been given much, much is expected of you. Motivation is about waking up and making sure that you're going to do your very best regardless of what you do. And to stay motivated over time is very difficult. It's not easy. There's nothing that I'm telling you today that is easy. What I'm giving you is a framework that you could look at so that you can develop constructs, so that you can conceptualize, and so that you can execute over time. So self-awareness, self-regulation, and motivation are the first three domains of emotional intelligence. And I encourage you to take a very deep dive on those areas. The E is empathy. The very best people at, at anything are empathetic and are able to see things from other people's perspective. And even if they haven't gone through whatever the individual's going through, they can imagine themselves going through it. Or they can remember a time where they went through something like that. So they're more patient with people. So that they understand people. So that they think not only with their mind, but also with their heart. People that are empathetic go the extra mile for people. So if you have everybody within an organization focusing on empathy, and I'm talking about everybody, in McAllen ISD it would be over 21,000 students and over 3,000 employees. And if we're all focused and looking through the lens of empathy simultaneously, then that makes us an organization that, that is going to be care-based. And it's going, to, it's going to develop a brand where you can start to feel that people care about one another. So empathy. We've talked about self-awareness self-regulation, motivation, and empathy. And finally, the last S is social skills. And that's one of the things that we need to practice. I know that you know, I grew up in a small town. I grew up in Hebronville, Texas, and it's a small ranching community. But one of the things that we were taught is the importance of social skills, the importance of treating people with respect, the importance of learning people's names, the importance of learning how to listen, the importance of learning how to ask questions, the importance of learning how to take constructive feedback, going out of your way to get to know somebody, trying to understand people for who they are, is social skills. Now you take it into the year 2020 and social skills takes on a whole different mindset now because it's beyond the things I just mentioned, but social skills now is also how to, how to maneuver social media, how to behave on Facebook, how to Make sure that you use your Twitter account appropriately and all the other social media platforms that you have. There's, there's, there's social skills within that environment. They've taken on a whole different name. So that's something that we have to focus on also as educators and as, as, as people that are in the public eye is that people are watching us. So if you're a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, an assistant superintendent, a superintendent, or anybody within an organization and an educational entity is that people are watching you. So social skills are important. So remember that, S-S-M-E-S, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. That's the psychosocial side of the game. That's why we look at the business perspective when we hone in on those areas. And we look at the psychosocial side and we hone in, and this is systemic, year after year. It's not a bunch of modules, it's not a bunch of binders, it's, it's, it's a simple leadership model that allows you to have a construct that will help you move your organization or your classroom forward. The third perspective is very important. And the third perspective we call the sense of belonging. Now the sense of belonging is important because everybody wants to belong to something. Everybody wants to be part of something. Everybody wants to have affirmation for their work. Everybody wants to know that they can be themselves at work and have fun. Everybody wants to know that they bring value to the team. So you need to have a group of leaders and a group of people working together, all working simultaneously to create this sense of belonging. And that leads to culture and it leads to climate, healthy cultures and climate. 
And the way we look at it with regard to a sense of belonging is we look at our district climate or our school climate or our classroom climate. We look at the climate as the classroom's personality or the campus's personality or the district's personality because we all have a personality. We have a personality that's been built over time. We have a personality that's been built by our parents, by our family, by our upbringing, by our beliefs, by who we believe we are, by who we've been told who we are. It's our personality, it shapes us. And the same is true with climate. We look at culture as the attitude the attitude. Culture is the attitude. We all have an attitude. We all have control of our attitude. So I always tell people, it's very difficult, very difficult to change somebody's personality. Therefore, it would be very difficult to change an organization's climate. It's very difficult because remember, we said climate equals personality. It's very difficult to change somebody's personality. But if you have any hope of changing somebody's personality, you're gonna to have to change their attitude first. So the same is true for culture and climate. If there's any hope of you changing the climate of your classroom, the climate of your campus, the climate of your district, if there's any hope, you're gonna to have to change the culture first. And changing the culture comes through the things that I previously talked about. If you wanna change the culture of your classroom as a teacher, then build synergy. If you wanna change the climate if you want to have an impact on a sense of belonging, then make sure everybody's committed to self-improvement and self-evaluation. Develop systems and processes for everything. Give people leadership roles and talk about the art of leadership. Talk about what they can do to get better. Focus on that business perspective and you'll be impacting the sense of belonging. Also focus on the psychosocial side. Get everybody to understand self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills in a deep way, not memorizing the acronym, not being able to define the term, being able to change behavior, being able to get people to truly self-regulate. That's the key, and that takes time, and it's not easy. But remember, what I'm giving you is a game plan and a construct and some anchors that you can lean on to get better because that's what I want. In my short time with you today, I want you to walk away and say, I learned something from that leadership model. I learned something from that business perspective. I took something away from that psychosocial perspective. The sense of belonging perspective was, was something that was impactful for me. And then finally, the last perspective is the instructional core perspective. So I've talked about the business perspective, I've talked about the psychosocial perspective. I've talked about the sense of belonging. In our leadership model, we also talk about the instructional core perspective, and that's our core business. And there's three tenets to that. We wanna make sure that our educators are highly skilled. That's number one, highly skilled educators. So we have mentorship programs. We have solid professional development programs. We use service centers like Region 1 to help us get better. We have avenues to make sure from a people development standpoint that everybody's doing their very best to increase their skill set in whatever they do. We do instructional rounds. We give teachers immediate feedback. We train our principals. Our content coordinators are on my organizational chart and I meet with our content coordinators regularly to make sure that we're providing teachers with a service and principals and everybody else. So, Educator skill is very important. The second component is, is to make sure that we have high level content. For us in Texas, it's the Texas Essential and Knowledge and Skills, the TEKS. So we wanna make sure that we take those TEKS and that we bundle them and that we have a year at a glance and then we break it down by six weeks and that we had instructional focus documents so that our content is streamlined so that our content is comprehensible, so that we understand what we're delivering, and so that we can scaffold how we deliver it. So the content is, is very, very important to make sure that, that kids internalize that. On top of that, we make sure that we reteach and enrich. We make sure that we have a value-added progress monitoring system that, that tells us when students are getting concepts and when they're not. 
So that's important. So we've talked about highly skilled educators, and then we've talked about high-level content. And then the last component of our instructional core perspective is that we want students to be engaged. And that's one of the E's for the three E's for today. The three E's for all talks about engagement. Well, that's a big part of our game too is we want highly skilled educators. We want aligned curriculum and highly engaged students in that curriculum. So it's about teachers that know what they're doing, teaching what they need to teach, with students in there that are engaged in that content. Those are the four perspectives of our leadership model in McAllen ISD. And I wanted to share that with you today. So if you don't have a leadership model, if you don't have anchors or constructs that help you understand and get the concepts across the entire organization, you develop one. In our district, the business perspective, the psychosocial perspective, the sense of belonging perspective, and the instructional core perspective. We've been executing this model for five years now. It's proven to be very, very effective. I'm proud to say that we're an A-rated school district for the last two times that TEA looked at accountability and gave districts a letter grade. We're in the post-secondary readiness distinction for the last three years in a row. We've earned the financial integrity rating system of Texas perfect score on the finance side for nine years in a row. And I'm very proud that you're here today learning to get better because we only have X amount of time. We only have X amount of time on this planet. We only have X amount of time in this profession. So we have to do our very best to utilize that time. We have to do our very best to make sure that although time is not infinite, time is finite, although time is not infinite, we have to do our very best to have an infinite impact so that when you leave your campus, when you leave your classroom, when you leave your district, that the mark that you left behind, the systems that you put in place are there for years after you're no longer there because it was systemic, because it was well thought out, because there was passion put into it. So I encourage you all to find ways to develop a model that will help you have an infinite impact in whatever it is that you do. And once again, I'm proud of all of you all. I'm very, very fortunate that I was given the opportunity to share some of my thoughts with you all and, and be a keynote today. And please know that if there's anything that I can do for you, reach out to me and I'd be more than glad to help you. Thank you and I, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your conference.